Thoracic appendages of prawn. Thoracic appendages are eight pair in number. The first three pairs are specialized for feeding. They are called maxillary. So the first, second, third maxillary is specialized for feeding. They are also called food jaws. Maxilla meaning jaw. Then P, that is poda means or peeds means foot, relates to foot. The remaining five pairs of the legs are used for walking. They are called as walking legs or periopods. The thoracic appendages are biranus. Biranus means they have two segmented protopodite and they have a five segment that is a endopodite and an exopodite. In thoracic appendage they have the endopodite will be five segmented and the exopodite is normally unsegmented. The two segmented protopodite are coxa and bases. The five segments of the endopodite are ischium, merus, carpus, propodus, dactylus. The propodus and dactylus when they are directly opposing they act like pis, uh, pincers and are called chelate. Such legs are called as chelate legs or kelpies. The first three periopods are chelate. They are used to grasp the food and to push them into the mouth and also to attack the enemies. In all maxillipedes, the exopodite is well developed, but in the walking legs, it is very small and rudimentary. Connected to the coxa and the kilpeds, uh, there is a respiratory process called epipodite or masticobranchia. This epipodite for the first maxillipede is flat and lobular and others are long, thin and terminally forked. Let us see which. The first maxillipede. So as said earlier, there is a two segmented protopodite that is the coxa and the basis. Then there is a five segmented endopodite and a flat exopodite. There will be an additional structure for respiration called the epipodite. This is common in all the legs. The first three legs are shown here. This is the first maxillipede, second maxillipede and third. This helps in feeding. And the remaining legs, five legs help in walking. So, first let us look at the first maxillipede. First maxillipede is flat, thin, like a leaf, foliaceous like a leaf, with three lobed this is three lobed, one, two, three lobed protopodite and there is a slender long endopodite, five jointed, one, two, three, four, five segments are seen here. The epipod, uh, that is the exopodite, this is the exopodite, it is unsegmented and flat, lobular. Now the, coming back to the protopodite, it serves as uh, nado basis or jaws. This is quite uh, acting like jaws or helping in feeding. The epipodite here is triangular in shape and helps in respiration. So once again, first maxillipede has three segmented protopodite which acts as nado basis or jaw. The endopodite is five segmented, long, slender. Exopodite is flat, lobular unsegmented, epipodite is flat, lobular, triangular, which helps in respiration. Now coming to the second and third maxillipede, they also have two segmented protopodite, coxa basis. Here also there is a coxa and basis. Then there is a segmented endopodite. The peculiarity of the second maxillipede is that the endopodite is curved into a shape of a question mark. That is how we uh, easily can detect or uh, uh, find the second.
second maxilla peak so this is curved into a question mark shape okay second maxilla peak has two segmented protopodite five segmented endopodite and an unsegmented exopodite and a forked or bifid epipodite this, this is into a fork shaped epipodite is a respiratory structure the endopodite is curved into an interrogation mark the third maxilla peak it differs from this from having all other structures are similar like a coxa basis is present this is the five segmented endopodite this is a flat exopodite and it uh, bifid epipodite is also present but here the difference between second and third is that the second endopodite is curved as an interrogation mark while the endopodite of the third is straight and slender that's the only difference between the two they have a straight endopodite so hope this uh, first three maxillipedes are uh, quite uh, easy to study that is, they have a uh, three segmented protopodite in the first case and then a segmented endopodite and a flat exopodite, triangular epipodite, which is again flat. Second and third are quite similar with the coxa basis and a segmented, five segmented endopodite and a flat exopodite, which is unsegmented. Then there is an epipodite, which is bifid or frog. And the endopodite of the second is curved into an interrogation mark, while the endopodite of the third is straight. Now coming to the walking legs of which the first three are chelate. Chelate means this is the different segments. So there is a coxa basis that is forming the protopodite. The long endopodite is having five segments. Each has names. The starting one is ischium, merus, carpus, this propodus and dactylus. They are placed opposing each other to form a pincer like structure so that they can pick food with it so that is called a keela and hence that legs are called as chelipedes or chelate legs so in prawns or pinnaeus there are three chelate pairs of legs that is the peculiarity of uh, prawns then the exopodite is small and uh, unsegmented then there is again a bifid epipodite here also so this is common for all the second and third uh, all these have the similar structure uh, periopods are two seg have two segmented protopodite they are long five segmented endopodite small filament are unsegmented exopodite and they are called chelipedes they are provided with an epipodite the first three pairs are chelate and in chelipedes, the propodus and dactylus have hinged articulation with each other. Dactylus movably articulates with the side of the propodus, forming a pincer like apparatus called keela. It helps in grasping the food and pushing it into the mouth. Next is the chelate legs. The chelate legs have uh, propo that is protopodite and it has uh, two protopodites, coxa basis, then ischium merus carpus, propodus, dactylus, but no chelate formation. Then there is an exopodite. Okay, and here the propodus and dactylus have no hinged articulation or movement. Then dactylus is immovable, and there is an exopodite, and the epipodite is absent in the case of chelate. You might not find the respiratory structures here. So that is also a peculiarity of this. Now coming to the abdominal appendages. They are six in number. They are used for swimming. Hence it is called pleopods. The last pair of uh, pleopods is called uropods. The first pleopod uh, differs in the two sexes. So, this is the structure of uh, a pleopod in the case of female and this is the structure in the case of males. The pleopods are also called as swimmerets or swimming legs. They are typically biramous. 
that is with a two segmented protopodite and a flat unsegmented exopodite and endopodite. The exopodite is larger than the endopodite. The last pair of pleopods as said is called as uropod that is having uh, the tail like foot that is they have they serve as tail fins that is helping in backward movement. The coxa and the bases in this uropod fuses to form a sympod. They are exopodite and endopodite in the case of uropod is produced into a flat or like structure. Together with the terminal telson, uropod forms a tail fan in backward swimming. So that is the peculiarity of the Europod that is there is a sympod, exopodite and endopodite is flattened to form you, you, that is uh, or like flattened or like structure for swimming. This is the second and fifth uh, pleopods which have a coxa basis, exopodite, endopodite. Exopodite is larger than endopodite that is common for second to fifth. The first one is differing in female and male. Females have a coxa basis small endopodite large exopodite that's only which is seen in a female but in the case of males the first pair of the first pair of pleopod is specialized the endopodite this is the coxa basis this is the exopodite this is the endopodite the two endopodite of the two legs will be provided with small hooks with the help of hooks the left and right appendages interlock and form a complex organ called petasma this is very important most important part of the uh, pineus indicus or any prod that is the first pair of abdominal appendages modified as petasma that is the endopodite have small hooks that interlock with each other and form a complex organ that helps in copulation that is in helping in transferring sperms from the male to female telecom. Telecom you had already studied seen on the ventral side that is a cup like structure which is a depression in the sternum that is the region where the male will transfer the sperms into the female. So that is the modification of the abdominal appendages. So just revising the whole uh, appendages that we had discussed. This is the thoracic appendage which is 8 in number. First three are in that is uh, involved in uh, feeding. The five are involved in walking. So the three walking legs of the five pairs are chelate legs the other two are non-chelate legs the first maxillipede is flattened like a leaf it has three segmented protopodite five segmented endopodite flattened exopodite and epipodite which is flat in the other case the interrogation mark of the uh, second uh, second maxillipede that is the endopodite is curved into an interrogation mark while here the endopodite is straight and they all have epipodites in chelate leg also you will find all this have that is epipodites. The endopodite five segmented as given here ischium mirus carpus, propodus dactylus, propodus and dactylus act as pincers. Now, in the case of non chelate legs, there is no epipodite and the, there is no propodus and dactylus are present, but they do not they are not oppositely articulated. So they are called non chelate legs. Abdominal appendages are six in number, of which the first pair differ very are very unique in the male and female they differ very they are very quite different in both the last pair is uropod that is there is a fusion of the may that is a coxa basis to form symport exopodite endopodite form our like structures in the remaining second to fifth epidermal appendages that is coxa basis endopodite is smaller and exopodite is larger in case of males the first pair has modified to form a petasma which helps in 